episode number 16 of the Karen Knits podcast. My name is Karen and I am coming to you from South Central Pennsylvania in the United States where I live, where I work, where I knit and where I get into all sorts of other other crafts and projects as well. This podcast is primarily a knitting podcast although Occasionally, I will talk about a few other things on this podcast, but I primarily want to keep this particular part focused on the knitting and the fiber fiber related projects and some crochet as well. I also have several other topics that I look at and spend time on on my YouTube channel. And what I like to do is I keep things in separate playlists. So if there are other topics that I am posting videos about, if that's not something you're interested in, you don't have to worry about going into that playlist. And I do keep all of the, the knitting podcasts all together in the Karen Knits playlist. I have other playlists that look at different topics. I have one that just started up where I'm going to be posting videos about my bullet journaling. I have another playlist where I focus on different crafty things that I've bought. I have yet another playlist where I spend some time looking at me or I, I do tapes of me trying out different crafting projects and different crafting things that I've bought. I suspect down the road I'll also be adding a sewing playlist and I wouldn't be surprised if I end up with art journaling and other art projects that I create specific playlists for those. So as I mentioned I do want to keep the the knitting part in in one one place. And the stuff you're going to be looking at today is going to be looking at knitting. I want to say a huge welcome to everyone. If you're a new viewer to my channel, welcome and thank you for checking me out. If you're a returning viewer, thank you very much for coming back and I look forward to seeing more of all of you in future episodes. I want to also wish everyone a very happy new year and I wish everyone all the best for 2019. I'm excited about the new year. I'm excited about what I'm going to be doing with this YouTube channel and with my the with my Karen Knits podcast portion of my channel. I'm really excited about what what might happen and how things will will grow and how they'll grow and develop over over the new year so I'm very excited about that I'm also really excited to embark on some new knitting projects which I haven't started right yet and I'm going to try to restrain myself and not start them for a little bit yet but I do feel a lot of excitement at the beginning of of any new year. So I welcome you to pull up a comfy chair, pull up your, grab your knitting, grab your crafting, crochet, whatever else you might be working on, grab yourself a beverage and sit back and enjoy and let's spend a little bit of time together. And I'll tell you about what I've been up to in the past, it's been almost two weeks since I've posted a podcast last with things going on over Christmas and just all that busyness I just didn't have a chance to get I didn't have a chance to get another podcast out since the previous one which I think came out around the 22nd or 23rd of December today when I'm filming this it's Tuesday January the 1st 2019 so we're we're into the new year and starting things off starting things off with a new podcast. I'm hoping I have it uploaded by the end of the day. Worst case scenario, you'll see you'll see this tomorrow morning. But anyway, enough, enough of that rambling, kind of a long, long drawn out introduction. So I'm talking about just for a couple minutes 
about what I'm drinking. So today I have, it's a raspberry mint tea from, it was actually a Christmas gift from my husband from a little shop down the road. It's called Tranquility. It's a really cute name. So it's just down the road from us. Uh, we haven't had a chance to actually go there and patronize the place, but my husband did go and buy a package of tea for me. It was part of my Christmas present, so raspberry mint, and it's it's really nice. It's a loose tea, so it has little little bits swimming around in it. Um, I do have to get probably a, a finer gauge, is that the word, for my my tea ball that I put my loose my loose tea in. And this is a new teacup. It is a, a porcelain. Uh, it has kind of a gold colored trim on it that I suspect would put on quite the light show if I tried to put it in the microwave. But anyways, I picked this up at Burlington Coat Factory a couple days ago. We were there doing a bit of shopping and they had this one. They also had a purple one and now I'm kind of regretting that I didn't bring the purple one home as well. And, but I, I, I did bring, I did bring the blue one. I just think it's just, it's gorgeous. I really like it. And it's a nice, light, delicate porcelain kind of material. And the tea is very yummy. I'm really enjoying that. So let's, after all this rambling, how about we talk about some knitting and what I've been up to in the past almost two weeks. So I actually have two, believe it or not, I have two finished objects to show you today. The first thing that I had, I can't remember if I talked about this or if I showed this on my podcast last time. I might not have actually started it yet. But what this is, is the, it's the boyfriend hat. And it's a pattern by Stephanie Nicole Bennett. And it's a free pattern on Ravelry. And it's a hat that I made for my husband for a Christmas gift. It was a last minute plan and idea to make this. So it was a, it was a late cast on that I think I cast on the 21st of December and I finished it on the 23rd. So I might have showed you the first little part of this that I was working on when I did the last, when I filmed my last podcast. So this is a hat I made for my husband. I had to, I gave it to him at Christmas time and I had to actually get him to give it back to me so that I could, I could show it to you on the podcast today. He had it, it's tucked into his jacket pocket. So he's worn it, it fits him fantastic and he really likes it. It's, um, I used a five millimeter needles or US size eight and it was the Burnett Barella Four Solids was the yarn that I used and it's a worsted weight yarn and this is in the color Velvet Night. It's a gorgeous dark purple color. Um, it's, a, it's a really pretty color. I really, really like the color. So it's a very quick, very easy knit. It has a nice design on the crown. The decreases are, are really pretty. I, it's, it's really nicely done. I think it's a, a three by two rib with a really nice design and style on, on the crown of the hat. So I'll, I have to take pictures actually for posting on my Ravelry page as well for this. Right now it's, I don't have any pictures on the, on the page. So I'll have to get a few pictures of this and then I'll give it back to my husband so he can he can wear it again. So that's my first first finished object. My second finished object, which I finished knitting it on the 24th of December, and I don't want to count it as one, I guess I can't quite count it as 100% done yet because I have not blocked it. But this is my Advent Scarf 2018. This is a design by Trisha Weatherston. 
She is the person behind the Sock Madness group on Ravelry. And as I talked about in several earlier podcasts, when I talked about this pattern, it's a design that, or a design or a, a idea that she does every Christmas, every year leading up to the Christmas season, where she designs this uh, scarf or a cowl pattern, and she releases one clue a day leading up until Christmas. This is the first year I've done this. I've done this probably, I think this might be my fourth year that I have knit along with the, with the Advent scarf or cowl that was designed. This is the first year though that I actually kept up with the knitting quite well and I actually finished the knitting on the same day. I, I finished knitting the last clue on the day that the last clue was actually released. I've never yet finished this at the same time as the majority of the rest of the, the gang doing this has done. And what I managed to do with this is I, I spent quite a bit of time only working on this pattern for the last probably the most of the month of December, the last part of November and all the first part of December up until the 24th. I basically exclusively worked on, on this project alone. I do need to block it, as I mentioned, but otherwise it is done. The tails are tucked in, although I always, when I tuck in the tails, I always leave about an inch or, inch or two that I don't cut right off until after I've completed the blocking. And then that way the thread has had, the end has had a chance to kind of settle itself in. And once I finish blocking it and it's dried, then I will snip the, the la those two little tails. I will snip, snip them off a little closer to, to the end. But here it is. I will show you this again, hopefully next week. I hope to get the blocking done this week now. I had actually hoped to have it done this past week, but that didn't happen. So here it is. The, it is a combination of all sorts of different cable and lace designs. And I really enjoyed working on this. I will admit there were a few stitches that I was not a huge fan of, but overall, I think it was a really fun, a really fun knit to do. It doesn't need an aggressive blocking, but it does need a little bit to to open everything up up nicely. I think if push came to shove, I could probably just leave it alone where it as is. It's quite long. I will measure it once once I finish blocking it. But it was a fun project, and I'm really really happy with with the finish the finished object. I used four millimeter needles or US size six and the yarn I used for this was Knit Picks Bear Stroll Sport Weight yarn and I dyed it myself. I used um, it's kind of a tonal dye on here. You can see that there are almost like a little micro striping in in the yarn. I will decide once it's finished blocking whether I'm okay with that little bit of striping effect on it or if it if it appears that it's those little striping bits are dis distracting from the cables and lace 
portion of the pattern. So I'll, I'll decide on that once I finish blocking it, whether I want to maybe re-dye the yarn or the finished object or just leave it as is. I, I suspect I'm going to leave it as is. I, I think it looks okay now, so we'll, we'll decide for sure on that once I finish blocking it. So those are my two finished objects. I don't know if I'll... This will not be a normal occurrence. It's going to be quite unusual for me to have more than one finished object in a, object in a week. And if you've watched this podcast for a while, you know that I haven't had that many finished objects to show you, period. But... That's one of my goals that I want to work on this upcoming year is to work towards finishing up more of the things I have working, I have in progress. Although I will admit I don't have very many works in progress or works in progresses, works in progress. <laughs> anyway, I don't have a lot of those, but I do find that I'm, I'll start on something and then I move on to something else and something else and I end up with a few projects that just get kind of pushed to the back burner and forgotten about. And one of the things I really want to focus on this year is making sure that I work on all of my projects. And I suspect that I'm going to... At least for the time being, I want to work towards being a more monogamous knit, more monogamous knitter. That was hard to say. <laughs> but what I want to do is spend a little bit more time focusing on one project at a time. At most two projects at a time, maybe one that's a little bit more complex and one that's a little bit more straightforward and, and mindless of a knit. So in the past two weeks, the key things I had worked on knitting were keeping up with my advent scarf, making sure that I got that finished. Then I worked on the boyfriend hat and got that finished up in time for Christmas. And other than that, the only project I've worked on since finishing those two projects is my row cardigan. And I've been quite monogamous, quite monogamous? I have trouble saying that word. I've been, I've been quite monogam. <laughs> I have been quite monogamous with my row card again for the past week or so. And I'm actually at the point now where I'm really excited about getting this thing finished. I'm probably probably getting to more than 75 to 85% complete now. So where I was before I had finished the back, I had finished both of the sleeves and I had started on working on the two, the two front panels of the cardigan. And I have been working on this exclusively since since Christmas and I'm happy to say that I have finished both of the front pieces so I'll just show one of one of them is that they ex this guy's getting in my way is that they excuse the, the markers I have these pink markers on are indicating is dividing this front portion up into four roughly equal parts so that when I pick up the stitches to do the front ribbing bands down the fronts and across the neck I have my stitches divided up across these areas this one I should have taken it out this is just marking where the armhole to, for measuring the length of the the length of the fabric from the armhole up to the top of the shoulder. So here is the right side. I just love the cables. So 
So I think when I last showed you this, I was either at this point on the two front pieces or I had done the the ribbing plus a little bit of a little bit of the the cable work down the fr or up the front. So that's the one piece and here is the left hand the left hand side. So again, I have marked with the pink markers roughly where the roughly quarters so that I know where to pick up the where to pick up the um, divide up the number of stitches to pick up. So the next thing I need to do is stitch the shoulder, stitch the shoulder, see? <laughs> ah, my, my speech is impaired this, this new year. But anyway, I need to stitch That was just a little white pickup truck. A noisy little white pickup truck. I thought it was a motorcycle. <laughs> anyway, the point where I'm at next is I need to sew the shoulder piece on the front and the back. And then I need to pick up a bazillion stitches along the front all the way up the front of the cardigan, all the way up the right side, then I will pick up the stitches across the back of the neck, which are sitting and waiting on a stitch holder for me, and then pick up another billion stitches down the front of the left hand side. and. I forget the exact number of stitches. There's something like 180 some stitches or in the neighborhood of 180 stitches that have to be picked up along each side. Plus I think there's 50 something stitches across the back of the neck. So there's roughly 420, 440 stitches all the way around up the front across the back back down the other side so it's roughly i think 100 or 420 440 stitches all the way around and i need to do a two by two rib for eight eight inches all the way around so i still do have a, a fair amount of knitting left to do but this is the only project I plan on working on. I'm going to sit down once once I have finished filming today and get the editing done. Or while I'm getting the editing done, I'm going to start picking up all of those stitches and get started on doing the ribbing. And hopefully, and then, so then once that's done, all that's left to do is stitch up the side seams and set in the sleeves and sew the sew the sleeve sew the sleeve seam <laughs> sew the seam down down both of the sleeves and down the side of the body and then she's done so i'm really hoping that i will have that i i'm really really hoping that i'm going to have my row cardigan finished to show you a finished object next week worst case scenario it'll be in two weeks but let's cross our fingers that I, I managed to get this done for next week. We'll see. So I don't think I mentioned the yarn I'm using with this. I'm using Knit Picks Fair Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight. And I was using 4.5 millimeter or US 7, yeah, US 7 needles for this. I believe it's the US 7 needles that I use for the ribbing all the way down the front panels. I have to double check that. But I'm pretty sure it's the I'm pretty sure it's the four and a half millimeter needles that I use for that. So those are my knitting projects. 
So as I mentioned already, I really do think I want to work towards being a somewhat more monogamous knitter. Once I'm finished with this project, I'm going to get back to work on my texture time shawl. That's something that I, I haven't worked on that in quite some time now. And I really do want to get that finished as well. I'm not... I haven't even hit the halfway mark on that that one yet. So I really do need to, once row is finished, I'll put that aside and I'm going to switch over to texture time and work on that one monogamously and get that one finished. And then, and only then, crossing fingers, will I be ready to cast on something new. If I know that if I cast on something new now, I'm just simply going to leave the poor texture time shawl it is going to still be on the back burner and I won't work on it. And I don't know when I'll ever finish it then. So I really do want to get onto that one next as soon as I'm done with my row card again. And then I'll decide on what's next. I have set up a goal for myself to try to participate in one of the Make 9 challenges in 2019. I don't know which garments I will make. I don't know if I will attempt to make all sweaters, which we see how long, you guys know how long I've been working on my row cardigan. I cast it on the beginning of February 2018. So it has taken me this long to to get close to finishing it. And I know that if I set myself up to knit nine sweaters in a year, it will not happen. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I, I know I won't be able to get that done. I, I have several sweaters that are in my queue that I really want to get going on. I have yarn to make several sweaters all set and lined up, but I know if I cast on another sweater once I'm either finished or close to finished my row cardigan, I know I won't pick up texture time and I won't do any more on that. So I really do want to get that finished up so that I can move on with a clean slate. So that's a little bit about some of the some of the things that I've worked on in the last couple weeks. It's almost two weeks. So again, I finished the advent scarf. I started and finished a boyfriend hat for my husband for a Christmas present and I've been focusing on finishing up the front pieces on my row card again. So next up I want to talk a little bit about a few of my recent knitting related acquisitions. The first thing I got is a Christmas gift from my husband. And I had pointed these out a couple times to him before and I finally got one. I got a yarn bowl. I've wanted one of these for for quite some time and I I got this one for Christmas this year. It is handmade. There is a ceramics studio just a block block and a half away from where we live and I had seen them there before so they're they're handmade by a local someone local and there it's, it's a one of a kind there no one else has the exact same one the painting on it I just it's gorgeous I just I love it and I've wanted one of these I've wanted a yarn bowl for quite some time I always admire them when I see other people's yarn bowls and so I'm I'm eager to get started on this I actually plan on using it to finish up my row card again I haven't used it yet 
Um, so again, this was something my husband gave me for Christmas. I haven't actually used it yet, but it will be, it will be getting used. I'm going to get started with using it this afternoon when I get, get some more work done on my row card again. I also, if you followed my Vlogmas posts over most of the month of December, you saw that I had done a scrap yarn or yarn leftover, sock yarn leftover advent calendar with a really good friend of mine in England. Uh, her name is Tracy. And she and I did the swap where, again, we had an advent calendar where we each sent a 10 gram little ball of yarn that we had left over from projects that socks or scarves or whatever we had made for ourselves in the past. So the other thing we decided to include with our advent calendar swap is each of us dabble with dyeing our own yarn for fun. And so we agreed that we would swap one, one full skein of sock weight yarn that each of us had hand dyed for the other one. So here's the one that she dyed for me. It is so pretty. I absolutely love this. It's in different greens, kind of a teal, pinks, going into kind of gold, yellow colors. It is so pretty. I don't know what I'm going to make with it. It most likely will be a pair of socks sometime. I can't cast on now, remember? I just said that I'm not letting myself cast on something new until I have more work done on my row card again. But... It's so pretty. I just, I love it. It is, what did she say it was? It is a wool nylon sparkle <laughs> sock yarn. It's, she thinks it is um, 75, 20, 50 mix of wool, nylon, and I guess probably Stellina. And it's a gold sparkle. Yeah, it's a gold color sparkle. And yeah, I'm not sure if you can see the sparkle in here. But it's just, it's so pretty. So I, I have to save this for something special. And with the, the variegated, I suspect I will do a fairly simple pattern so that I can, I can just let the, the yarn, I can let the yarn do the, the talking and, and do its looking pretty stuff. So thank you, Tracy. And we've already decided that we're most likely going to do the advent calendar sock yarn scrap swap again next year. We both had a lot of fun with it. I really enjoyed it. And my other new acquisition, my husband and I went out to check out a few nearby stores a couple days ago and I went and checked out a Tuesday morning store ne fairly near to us and it's always hit and miss what they have there for yarn and I'm always eager and excited to see if they have something I, I want or need. More emphasis on the word want versus need. I have enough yarn. I, I don't need yarn. I want yarn. Let's be honest here. So anyway, so I found this. It is Fibra Natura Lima. And it's a yarn, it's a universal yarn. And it is 100% super, superwash wool, 
It's a worsted weight yarn. 100 grams each skein and each skein is 284 yards. And it's a gorgeous, I love this blue. I just love, love this blue. It's coming out just a drop brighter, I think, on the screen than it is in, in real life. It's a little bit more dusty, muted kind of shade. But it's it's gorgeous. I just, I love it. And I don't know if you can see. Maybe that makes it, yeah. I'm not sure if this is coming into focus on the screen or not. But it is, it's so pretty. And I, I really like it. And I got six skeins of it. And that will be enough to make myself some type of cardigan. So again, not until row and texture time are done. I'm not going to let myself do that. I'm not going to let myself cast this on. But there were, I got six skeins of it. So it's. It's such a pretty, pretty color. I do want to go back because there were a few more skeins in other colors. And I think what I want to do is double check and make sure I have enough to make certain type of garment with it. There were four skeins, I believe. I don't think there were six. I think there were only four skeins of a dark charcoal-y kind of gray and I was kind of eyeing that one up too and thinking maybe and now I'm thinking I probably am going to go back there in the next within the next week I'm actually hoping I might I might buzz down there on Friday it's only about a 20 20 minute drive from here so I kind of suspect I want to go and buy that they also had and I was contemplating it as well they also had there this really pretty box of tea and it was in a nice heavy wooden a pretty wooden box and it said that the package had i think it was 80 i think there was 80 tea bags in there and i don't remember if it said there were eight or ten different varieties of tea so I'm, I'm very tempted. I, I contemplated it and I thought, oh, I, I've, I got three different, my husband gave me three different kinds of tea for Christmas. And I thought, do I really need, yeah, I, I, I've been mulling it over since I got home and I thought, oh, okay, I'm, the more I think about it, the more I, I really do want to go back and get, get that. A, because I love my tea and B, the box was gorgeous. And there's all kinds of things I can probably do with the box afterwards. And I just, yeah, I think I'll be going back. So you probably are going to see, I'll probably show you the tea box next week when I podcast, or at least I, I suspect I'll have more yarn. We'll see, but um, I do suspect I'm going back there on Friday to buy, buy more yarn. One of my New Year's, um, I don't know if you want to call them a resolution, one of my goals I have in the new year is to reduce my yarn stash. Now I know that for myself personally, I know that there's no way that I can, I can cold sheep. I'm on, I just, let like I say, I just, bought six skeins of yarn on Sunday afternoon. That's when it was we were there. Today's Tuesday. Yeah, it was Sunday afternoon we went for a drive down there. And so I just bought new yarn then and I'm already contemplating more yarn they had there that I want. Not need, want. So I I know that going cold sheep just it's it's not me I know I I'm just setting myself up for fa failure if I try doing that so what my goal is instead is that overall I want I want the amount of yarn that I use 
or get rid of or de-stash, I want that amount of yarn to be larger than the amount of yarn that's coming in. So I have a little table thing set up in my bullet journal where each month I'm going to write down how many skeins of yarn came in, how many skeins of yarn went out. So the incoming yarn is going to be a positive number. The outgoing yarn will be a negative number. And on average, I want each month to be end up being a negative number where I'm using more yarn or removing more yarn than I'm accumulating. So my goal is to have less come out at overall negative at the end of the year. So I want to use up more than I buy. So that's that's my one of my one of my knitting related or fiber related goals that I have for 2019. I also want to work towards, as I mentioned already a couple of times, I want to work towards being a little bit more of a monogamous knitter. I want to focus on a specific project. I suspect what I will end up doing is having two projects that I am working on simultaneously. One will be more complicated, like a, a sweater or a complicated, more complicated sock design or a more complicated shawl pattern, something along that line. That'll be one project. And then the second project will be a straightforward, mindless type of project. And I'm thinking that's the way I want to work through and what I want to do during the upcoming year. I might end up using my mindless project being my um, my sock scrap blanket, my mitered square blanket. I have not put enough attention onto that much at all recently. And it's something I've had on the go for a long time. And it's it's about time that I really start to focus on getting that done. So that might be what I use for my, my mindless project, although it's not something that's as easily portable now. So it is getting a little bit bigger. So, well, these are just kind of, I'm sorry, I'm just I'm kind of thinking this through while I'm talking to you. So I really do want to try to keep my knitting fairly monogamous and not to be as wildly attracted to starting something new because I do love casting on new projects. But in all honesty, I do find that when I do cast on new projects, existing ones tend to fall by the wayside. And I really do find that I do prefer working more monogamously on a small number of projects. So that's my goal. We shall see how that works out over the year. As I also mentioned, I do want to work on doing the Make Nine Challenge. So that will most likely involve some articles of clothing that are going to be fabric and sewn and some that are going to be knit, either garments or shawls, scarves. I, I haven't worked out the details of what it is I want to do for that challenge yet, so that, that's yet to be decided. Um, I'm not quite sure if I'll succeed with that goal. I tried doing it last year. I didn't really formalize it very well, so it didn't really, <laughs> it didn't really go, go very well. But we'll see how it goes this year. So anyway, that about sums up what I, what all I wanted to chat about today. I thank you for spending a little bit of time with me this afternoon while I'm talking. It's getting on to about 3.30 here now in the afternoon. It's about time I have a, a pork roast that needs to go in the oven in a few minutes. So I better, better get ready to wrap this up and start getting supper, get supper in the oven at least and then get on to my editing. So I'm not sure if I'll do another post again this week 
probably not. I don't think I'll have enough to talk about again on, on Friday. So I suspect I will be back with another episode towards the end of next week. So hopefully I'll have my row cardigan done by then for you guys. Oh, I, I hope so. I really hope so. Uh, we shall see on that. But that's about all for today. I, again, I thank you for taking the time to sit here and listen to me ramble on about what I've been up to for the past couple weeks. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button. I hope you either will have subscribed to the channel or if you have not, you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the little bell icon. I never know which I never know which corner it's in. It's in one of those corners. So if you want to hit the bell and you can get notified when I publish new new content. And I think that's about it. So have a fantastic rest of the day and I like I said happy new year and I wish everyone all the best for 2019. I hope it's your best year ever. Alrighty. Thanks for spending some time with me and I'll catch you guys next week. Bye now.